Jimmy Spencer made it his goal to evolve the Spencer lineage to the NASCAR Cup Series. While his father Ed Spencer made one NASCAR Cup Series start, he turned down opportunities to run full time and run the Indianapolis 500 because he was raising a family. After many years of hard work rising up the late model ranks, Jimmy Spencer had made it to the NASCAR Cup Series and had gained the nickname Mr. Excitement. However, in his first few years, Jimmy Spencer was still rough around the edges and a lot of drivers didn't like the way he raced. Combine that with the little success Jimmy Spencer had as a Cup Series driver entering July of 1994, he would have to put in a lot of work to elevate himself as a NASCAR Cup Series driver in order to get the respect of drivers and fans alike. NRF Productions presents Jimmy Spencer's Redemption Arc. The career of Jimmy Spencer is most remembered for him being aggressive and telling it like it is. His racing personality was perfectly described by his nickname Mr. Excitement which was given to him by Mike Joy in a race at Stafford Speedway where he spun out a lot due to using up his tires. As a NASCAR official wanted to park him, Jimmy Spencer disobeyed, got back on track, and went on to finish second in that race. Although, to his defense, some of this was NASCAR being NASCAR. For Jimmy Spencer, being nicknamed Mr. Excitement was both a blessing and a curse. Jimmy Spencer was a driver that felt he was painted in a bad light by the media. The media, in Spencer's opinion, would try to frame him as a guy that wrecked people, they're wrecking on him, even when he didn't have a single scratch on his car. Jimmy Spencer carried around with him this vile odor, this awful stench of being a dirty racer, and it even costed him competitive opportunities to race. Still, there were many drivers and fans out there that believed Jimmy Spencer got that dog in him. More like a couple hot dogs based on the first half of his 1994 campaign. At North Wilkesboro, Ken Schrader wheel hopped into turn three and it just so happened that Jimmy Spencer was on his outside. It was a racing deal, but Jimmy Spencer was none too pleased. I'm sure if he had his way, he would have gotten out, banged Schrader's hood and messed up his windshield. Instead, he would retaliate under caution to where NASCAR sent him to the penalty box for five laps. You know, that's kind of insane because NASCAR, with a lot less technology at their disposal, somehow made a better call here than in an important playoff race 28 years later. So, after Jimmy Spencer served his penalty and got his car repaired, he poetically wheel hops the same way Schrader did to him. Yet somehow, some way, Ned Jarrett saw things differently and tried to convince us that this was just a racing deal. I don't believe that was anything intentional. Meanwhile, at Talladega in May, Jimmy Spencer would get passed by Dale Earnhardt with five laps to go and finish fourth. However, that is not what the media wrote about on Sunday night. Battling mid-pack on lap 114, Jimmy Spencer drifts up into Terry Labonte and sparks the big one. Sure, it was a potential day of profit for Jimmy Spencer's junkyard with now 12 wrecked race cars. However, the reputation of Jimmy Spencer was mangled, crushed, and shredded up to where it would be hard for him to put the pieces back together. There's, you know, somebody's trying to go up the middle and bully his way through, and what happens is we get in 10 car accidents. It's totally unnecessary. Unfortunately, we got a great sport here, but unfortunately we just don't have enough qualified drivers to run this fast. You got a few people that are that way, and uh, unfortunately they cause some accidents sometime, and they're able to continue on like nothing happened, and... Uh, it'll, it'll eventually catch up with them. I mean, I just can't believe this. I mean, the ARCA race, the ARCA race, we didn't have this kind of problem. I mean, this is just, this doesn't make sense to me. A lot of ill race drivers down here, ill at some of the other drivers here for the lack of patience. Even Dale Earnhardt had something to say about this and claimed that Jimmy Spencer had made a lot of enemies. 
This was one of Jimmy Spencer's closest friends in the garage and a guy that helped coach him into many great life decisions, namely leaving Bobby Allison to just take the money and race for Junior Johnson. Jimmy Spencer didn't need to hand out sour heads in the garage because his driving had already left a sour taste in the mouths of his competitors. But as cliche as it sounds, you can talk the talk if you can walk the walk. When Jimmy Spencer was racing in New England, he once trolled the local fans by saying, you guys are upset because I'm kicking your hero's ass. Except for the fact on Sundays in the NASCAR Cup Series, it was often Jimmy Spencer getting kicked in the rear by his competitors. Jimmy Spencer at this point in his Cup Series career had driven for Buddy Baker, Bobby Allison, and now Junior Johnson for 94. Those people had decades of racing wisdom, and what did Spencer have to show for it? Just a handful of top 5 finishes and a best points finish of 12th. NASCAR fans would need binoculars to see the number 27 McDonald's car in the garage as he was 26th in the points entering Daytona. So Jimmy Spencer was being over aggressive and talking a big game while not having any results on the racetrack. Yeah, no wonder almost everyone in the NASCAR world hated this guy or at least despised him on the racetrack. That's it, why do you keep showing up? Nobody likes you, we hate you, you're stupid, you're ugly, leave! Jimmy Spencer was well on his way to becoming the biggest loser without having to spend a single gym session with Bob Harper. But part of the beauty of the NASCAR Cup Series is the plethora of drivers that have changed their reputation. One week, you can have the entire industry hate your guts. Then the next week, you can erase all of that by just casually creating one of the greatest moments in NASCAR history. And what would happen in the summer of 1994 would change the perception of the name Jimmy Spencer. Daytona International Speedway not only a place where NASCAR paid Jimmy Spencer $10,000 to not race, Spencer, who loved his mama dearly, made a promise that he would win a race at Daytona. Now, you could argue that watching super speedway races for the racing is like watching Madam Webb for the plot. Because people were watching to see if the Daytona backstretch would turn into Jimmy Spencer's junkyard, which it would in this race. However, in the 1994 Pepsi 400, there was a compelling storyline in terms of the racing. Ernie Irvin and Dale Earnhardt were in a rigorous battle for the season championship. Every single win and every single point mattered under the old Latford point system, so it was understandable that the two were fighting hard for the maximum 185 points that could be earned in this race. However, that battle wasn't as exciting as the true surprise underdog of this race. I'm talking about Mr. Excitement Jimmy Spencer. In this race, Jimmy Spencer battled loose conditions but was really aggressive. The McDonald's driver was hungry for more than just the Big Mac combo. Entering the final lap as close to Ernie Irvin as two June bugs on a summer night. In Jimmy Spencer's words, the only way to beat Ernie Irvin was to lose him in the rearview mirror. So, after running high and running low, the Cup Series points leader would find out just how stout Spencer's car really was. Here they come! It's gonna be a drag race to the checkered flag! Jimmy Spencer wins it! Oh, Jimmy Spencer was on the winning end of, as of this recording, the ninth closest finish in NASCAR history. Winning your first career race is monumental. You have just done something that only 200 people have ever accomplished. Jimmy Spencer's first win in the NASCAR Cup Series was a big deal, especially since he did it in exciting fashion. Still, there were going to be critics. There were going to be fans and media members that were going to say, what an exciting win for an underdog. Hey, a broken clock is right at least once a day, am I right? Jimmy Spencer would need to lean on his mama's advice for his return to Talladega. 
never look into the past, but instead move on and move forward. Statistically, Talladega was one of Jimmy Spencer's better racetracks. I know we've already buried the past, but for just a minute, let's dig out the tidbit where Jimmy Spencer finished fourth in May. Jimmy Spencer was just five laps away from intimidating the NASCAR world by seeing his face in victory lane. Instead, Jimmy Spencer would come up just short to his good friend Dale Earnhardt, who would score his seventh of ten Talladega victories. And I would say that's a pretty good driver to lose to, considering that Dale Earnhardt, as of this recording, holds the record for most Talladega victories. You could see the evolution of Jimmy Spencer's craft at the super speedway races mainly because he is a driver that is multi-cultured. Spencer would be known as a NASCAR journeyman who raced for various organizations and learned a ton from some of the all-time greats. Buck Baker, Bobby Allison, and Junior Johnson helped make him into the super speedway racer he was becoming. In addition, being a Junior Johnson driver ensured that Jimmy Spencer's cars would be at the forefront of innovation. Crashing out of the 1994 Daytona 500 was one of the best things to happen to Junior Johnson and Associates. Jimmy Spencer's fleet was replenished by Banjo Matthews. This was a three-time cup champion as a car builder and he immediately got to work on building a near flawless super speedway race car. Junior Johnson was quoted in saying that the car made him rethink their whole program. The car was praised for its front end that traveled well and its exceptional job at scrubbing speed. Jimmy Spencer had a fast car and he wanted a ticket to victory lane. With 19 laps to go, Ernie Irvin was doubled up by the Junior Johnson tag team. Left to fight amongst themselves, Bill Elliott tried to win. However, he was just tickled with finishing second in such a subpar season for his standards. As Jimmy Spencer rounded turn four, he went from being NASCAR's biggest loser of all time to NASCAR's biggest winner in the month of July. Coming to the strike. It's Spencer. Jimmy Spencer became the 87th man in NASCAR history to win multiple Cup Series races. It was a win that didn't just establish him as a driver but gave his name some credibility. Back in May, his competitors tarred him, feathered him, and probably wanted to send Jimmy Spencer to the McNugget Fryer. Now, these same drivers were not only working with him on the racetrack, but they were congratulating him on his massive victory. July 1994 was Jimmy Spencer's redemption arc as a NASCAR Cup Series driver. The industry got to witness the front row seat to his evolution as a driver, using his Mr. Excitement label to not make archetype moves, but to raise eyebrows as someone that got the most out of his car in the Cup Series. Jimmy Spencer used his knowledge taught to him by racing's best to smooth up those edges. Because of that, Jimmy Spencer would forever become a winner in the NASCAR Cup Series and would officially strengthen his reputation as a driver. You know, it would be rather unfortunate if there were actually valid allegations that NASCAR actually rigged the races Jimmy Spencer won in order to keep a sponsor in the sport. Well then. So, if you enjoyed that video, be sure to check out some of the other great videos from NRF Productions. Also, be sure to check out Fuel Cell Full every Friday for content covering modern day NASCAR. Other than that, this is Nathan for Digital Gas House. Life's a beach, and then you drive.